Good morning. Welcome again to Morning Devotions, and thank you again for our time together. Well, Alicia Williamson Garcia is ministering again today. It's a great women's conference. It's been a great week. Thank you, ladies, for all of your hard work. One more day, come and be a part. But right now, I want us to come back to the book of 1 Kings, chapter 12, and I want us to learn what I call Aaron 2.0. Remember Aaron, the brother of Moses? I call this Aaron 2.0. 1 Kings 12, beginning with verse 25. Then Jeroboam fortified Shechem in the hill country of Ephraim and lived there. From there he went out and built up Peniel. Jeroboam thought to himself, the kingdom will likely now revert to the house of David. If these people go up to offer sacrifices at the temple of the Lord in Jerusalem, they will give, again their, give their allegiance to their Lord, Rehoboam, king of Judah. They will kill me and return to Rehoboam. After seeking advice, notice that, after seeking advice, the king made two, not one, two golden calves. He said to the people, It is too much for you to go up to Jerusalem. Here are your gods, O Israel, who brought you out of Egypt. Now, isn't that fascinating? The same words that Aaron used. Here is your God who brought you out of Egypt, but now there's two. Here are your gods. Now, there's three things I want you to see here today. Number one, sin always grows. People never forget sin. They never forgot. He sought advice. People remembered that there were other gods made by Aaron. This could be something that could be sold to the people. It's hard to sell something brand new, but it's easy to resell a recycled sin. Let me say that again. It's hard to sell something brand new, but it's easy to sell or resell a recycled sin. But sin always grows. So now we don't have one golden calf, we have two golden calves. Be very careful when people are trying to bring up the sins of the past. They always want you to double it. Secondly, I want you to see that religious rules change for the purpose of controlling people. Now, the difference between Christianity and religion is simply this. Christianity is all focused on Christ, and there's no control in it except Paul said, the love of Christ controls me. His love for me controls me. As pastors, we don't control the people. As, as leaders, we don't control the people. But religion, as pastors, we focus the people on Jesus. But religion is all about controlling people. Now, sometimes they make the rules where you confess your sins to me, and then once you start telling them all your deepest, darkest secrets, that preacher owns you and can manipulate and control your life. Religion always changes the rules in order to control people and stay in control. Third thing I want you to see, worship is not about convenience. Now notice, be very careful when religious leaders begin to say, it's too much for you. It's too much for you. I care about you. How do we make this more convenient for you? And they start shortening the services to one hour. We, we want to have a one-hour service to be convenient for you. We want to make it easy. You don't have to come to church anymore. Just send your tithe and offerings and watch us on television. We want to be convenient for you. Be careful when religious leaders begin to say that because worship is not about convenience. Worship flows from a heart of love. Worship flows from a heart of devotion. Worship flows from a heart of commitment to God. Now, when you take commitment and you take devotion out and you start making the, the, the dominating rule or the dominating rule of, of worship convenience, I'm sorry, you have missed it. 